Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad and today I'd like to show you how to make these little cute upside down bunny egg cosies that are perfect for your breakfast table at Easter or in fact any time of year. They're very easy to make. We will have templates available for you in the description if you look down below under the show more. But it is simply your egg cosy and your ear and that's all you need. So, for your ears, grab yourself some printed cotton, fold it in half right sides together and draw two ear designs on the fabric. Now, I'm actually going to sew these while, before cutting the fabric because it does make much, life much easier because you can actually follow the template line as a sewing line. When you get to the top of the ear, pop your needle in, lift the foot up and turn the fabric and come back down. There's one, and here is t'other. And sewing the ears like this actually, because it preserves the integrity of the fabric, makes it much easier to do it quickly. And then just simply trim your five mil seam allowance around your drawn line. Cut it straight across at the top so you haven't got too much bulk. There you go. And then you just need to turn them inside out. Now, just for a change, I've actually remembered to bring a knitting needle with me to turn these the right way out. But don't force the knitting needle through the fabric to get the point of that ear out because what will happen if you're not careful, it will go straight through. and then just manipulate those seams flat. You can press these, of course, for a much neater finish. But uh, this will be fine. And then just what I want to do is the bottom edge of that, just pleat it and run a couple of stitches through it to keep it pleated. With the other ear, don't pleat it in the same direction, pleat it in the opposite direction, like so. So you have a pair of ears. Put them to one side. For the main part of the egg cosy, you need a rectangle of printed fabric, a plain lining and some lightweight quilt wadding. What I'm going to do is actually cut these out all together so I know they're all the same size. And you'll see I've left, there's a five mil seam allowance that I've left on here. When you put your quilt wadding on the fabric, don't put it right up to the edge of the fabric, put it five mil, five mil in. Because when you come to turn this inside out, it's much, much easier if you haven't got that double layer of quilt wadding. So, I have to think about this now. Yeah. Sorry. I just had a bit of brain freeze then. I forgot what I was doing. Cut your pieces out. And with the templates that we supply you online, I always draw around the template and then use that pencil line as a stitching line. So you will need to add your five mil seam allowance or quarter inch seam allowance around the outside as you're cutting. 
It's obviously not the same as a dressmaking pattern where the, the pattern piece includes the seam allowance. But this, to me, seems a much more logical way of doing stuff, especially when it's sort of home sewing for items around the home. If you forget, it's not the end of the world, just don't use extra large eggs. So unpin your pieces. Take your top bits off and put your linings, linings, quilt linings in the middle of them. Pin them and then just zigzag stitch around the edge of these to hold the quilt wadding in place. And as you go around the curve, just let the feed dogs do their work. Just hold it and pivot the fabric. That's the other. Right, before you go any further, turn one piece, or turn them both the right way up. Decide which one you want to be the front of your egg cosy and just pin your ears onto the front. And stitch them in place. Just a little top stitch, and that's a zigzag stitch. Ignore that one. And as long as those stitches, those top stitches are within your 5mm seam allowance, you'll be fine. Because then what you will need to do is just fold those ears in and pin them down to make sure they don't get in the way. Because you're now going to sew your back to your front all around the edges. I'm just going to pin these to make sure they stay in the same place because you'll be sewing through two layers of quilt wadding and two layers of fabric. And it might shift if you're not using a walking foot. when you turn it out you have the outer of your egg cosy with about a million ends of cotton because of all the stay stitching that you've done get rid of some of them and then we just need to sew the inners but what I need to do is remember to leave a gap in the top of the inner so that we can turn it the right side out So we'll sew up one side. Sew up the very top. And then carry on about five centimetres, a couple of inches away from the where you stopped. I'm the world's worst person for leaving a really small hole for turning things out. And the danger is, if it is too small and you try and force it through, it will split it and it will ruin your work. So, tuck your ears here. Keep your egg cosy right side out, your liner right side in, and just slip that egg cosy inside the lining, like so. And because this egg cosy is so tiny, you're not going to be able to take away your accessory drawer and run it around 
as you would normally do if you were doing something like a collar. But what I'd recommend, don't even need to pin it if you're careful. You need to, well actually I will put, shall I put a pin in it? Yeah, let's put a pin in it just for safety's sake. Run it on the inside so that you're not risking trapping part of that egg cosy under your needle without noticing. And just sew all the way around the top edge. And this is the reason why we left that quilt wadding five millimetres shorter than the rest of it, or a quarter of an inch shorter. Because you can then use the line of the quilt wadding as a guideline to sewing the liner to the outer fabric. And this is exactly the same way as you'd sew a lining onto a tote bag or something like that. It's just you're working with something much, much smaller, so you have to be a little bit more careful. There you go. Because it's such a short seam, it's relatively painless. And then you just need to grab your bunny's ears and pull them out of the lining. I have so many odd ends of cotton. It's ridiculous. Right, I'm just going to go back and put that in because I've noticed that where I've stitched there, I have not covered the ends of my bunny's ears. So let's just pop him back inside his lining. So glad I left a decent sized hole this time. Find where my ears are and just sew it with a slightly greater seam allowance. And that's the kind of problem that you can come up against when you are effectively sewing blind because you, you, you can't see what you're doing on the underlayers. But it's easily resolvable, like so. Tuck in the raw edges of your lining. And then just quickly top stitch. That closed. and then push your lining back inside your bunny. And then what you can do is you can top stitch this seam like I have done. No, you can't see it on that one. Where's the one I've done? Here you go. Top stitch that seam, just sort of three mil in from the bottom of it by running it upside down again through there or with this one here, I've actually done it with a very small hand running stitch, which I found much, much easier than top stitching it because the diameter of that circle is quite narrow. And if you want a nice finish, you know, if this is a, you know, celebratory Easter breakfast table, you want it to look good. But then also what I'd recommend you do is just get yourself a needle and thread. And just very carefully run a couple of stitches at the top of the crease of your bunny's ear to keep them upright while they're on the on top of the egg otherwise they'll droop like so oh, probably would have helped if I'd actually put a knot in that thread wouldn't it A couple of stitches. Like so. And then what I just want to do is show you how to make a pom-pom for the top of the bunny. So I know rabbit tails are normally white. Let's have yellow for a change. Um, you've probably seen these available, these little pom-pom makers. They're fantastic, and I don't know how I 
ever live without them. Not that I make pom-poms on a regular basis, but they are very easy to make a decent sized pom-pom quickly. If you wrap the yarn around one side of it, quite loosely at first, and as the thickness of the yarn builds up, you can uh, increase the tension on that yarn because as it gets thicker, the length of yarn will be longer. And if you don't change your tension, you'll end up with an oval instead of a circle. Run it around to the other side and wrap. And if I'd actually thought ahead, I wouldn't have used yellow yarn on a yellow pom-pom maker because it would make it much easier for you to see what I was doing if they were two contrasting colours, wouldn't they? But such is life. So let's just do that. And it doesn't have to be so full that you have trouble closing it, but you just want quite a nice plump pom-pom. And then cut yourself a length before you start cutting Cut that little loop first. Oh, I need a, a pointier pair of scissors. That's no pointier. Let's use a scalpel. No. We'll go back to the original scissors. And I will curse myself for not actually getting a smaller pair of scissors out on the table before we try to do this. Make sure you've locked your pom-pom maker together properly before you start trying to open. Right, stay there. It's all right, it'll be fine. We hope. Honestly, I've made thousands of pom-poms. I've made a pom-pom rug in the past. This has got to be the most catastrophic pom-pom I've ever made. So wrap your yarn around the middle of it. Wrap it round again before you tie your first knot because that will ensure that it gathers up evenly. Go around another couple of times and then fasten it with a nice tight knot. And then you can open the arms of your pom-pom maker and hopefully the whole thing won't fall apart. There you go. Just slips off like that. Give it a good shake. Trim off any straggly ends. And then find yourself a darning needle from my massive pin cushion full of Darning needles. And stitch it down the middle of that top seam. So there's one end. Oh. Grab the other end of the tying cord. And pop it down just next to it, going through all the layers of fabric and wadding to come out on the inside. And then just tie the ends in a secure knot. And don't trim it right to the knot because that's a surefire way of it coming undone, especially if you pop it in the wash. Leave some decent ends so that you've then got your little egg cosy. Ooh, that's a very square bunny tail that will sit over your egg cup. Sits over normal egg cups. And it will keep your hard-boiled eggs warm. Right, I hope you're still with us after that uh, rather lengthy demonstration and I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you again soon with some more interesting sewing videos. Thank you very much for watching. 
If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.